right, we are live. Brian, thank you for joining us today. How you doing? I'm doing great, Gabe. How you doing out there today? I'm doing fantastic. It's great to have you on the show. Um, to get us started, why don't you tell everybody, you know, who you are, where you're from, and how you got started in real estate in the first place. All right, man. Yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I live right now. I live in the Virginia Beach uh, area, which they call it Hampton Road. So it's about eight or nine cities. But I grew up in a small town in West Virginia on the side of a hill beside a little creek. And I hunted and fished about every day of my life. Um, and But I, after I did my undergrad in business at a local college, I packed up and moved here to Virginia Beach and went to Regent University. And there I got my master's and then I got my doctorate. And it was in my doctorate program that I started to uh, find my love for real estate. And uh, a buddy of mine was, you know, I was get, I love teaching. I love training. I was doing all these coaching classes, leadership coaching, life coaching, you know, goal setting, dreams. You know, I was, I loved all that stuff I was learning in my doctorate. And, uh, but my buddy said, hey, you know, I've, I've been in Hampton Roads 15 years. I've never made less than 100000 And I've just been selling houses, flipping a house here and there. And he's like, why don't you think about that? Because your wife is pregnant. I did, had just gotten married. My wife got pregnant. Then we were like, do I really want to pack up and go make like 40 grand working at a university and then work my way up one day? Or do I want to try this thing called real estate, you know? Uh, so I started finding land for builders while I was doing my doctorate. And then, so at night I would call all these landowners and be like, Hey, you know, do you have any land to sell? And, you know, I mean, I would call them and say, I know you have land. Do you know you have land? Cause a lot of people don't even know they own it. They might've inherited it because we were working in a Norfolk area and there's a lot of passed down property there. And so the title's really dirty, you know, really messy, cloudy title. Um, so always, always a challenge, but, uh, so I found land for uh, several months. And then when I finished my doctorate, I decided to give real estate a full-time try. And so I stopped teaching. I was teaching at Regent university at that point, doing some teaching and modular classes and stuff. And I said, I'm doing hundred percent real estate. So when these classes are over, I'm going, you know, full-time and I dove out and I sold my first house in my first month. And I had, I sold one of the pieces of land I found. And we to build a custom home on it. Um, and then after about, so I did that for a couple years. And then I started uh, building with, I uh, got a partner, Kenton McClung. And he's a great guy. And we've been partners for all these years. And we started modular, building homes with modular, where they bring them in in boxes. And we only did that in our first year. And that was, you know, about our second year was 2017, 2018, then the market crashed. So we built 14 houses. We thought we were going to be rich, young, and everything was going to be great. And then, well, boom, we lost everything we made. And we were just trying to make sure we didn't default and try to sell off the land we had. And the land value was half of what it was. And so we had to recover, you know, um, and so we started flipping houses. We continued to do some building and I started a real estate team and we started selling houses like crazy. And I do a lot of online lead generation, generating hundreds of leads a month, if not thousands, uh, depending on how many we need. Um, and so I've done that for years. So we started selling about 60 to hundred million a year in real estate, you know, every year. And I've done that for about you know, 15, 18 years, something like that. Um, and so now we have about 80 real estate agents at my brokerage fit realty and it's a, like a boutique brokerage. And, uh, we have my home building company has evolved now all these years later to a true custom, you know, if you want to custom build a $600,000 house on a piece of land anywhere in this whole eight, nine cities, like we're your guys. So we've been doing it long enough now that my partner and the staff that he manages in the building company is a well-run machine, beautiful homes, you know? So, uh, so I love it. Those are the two main things I do. So. Damn. I, I love it. There is a lot to unpack there. 
So uh, you got started so many years ago. You're in a doctorate program. What was your uh, what was your doctorate program? It was a doctor of ministry in leadership and training. Nice. Uh, yeah. So I had I did uh, my master's was in church history, and my doctorate was in uh, leadership training and development. So nice. Okay. So you were in your doctorate program. You had a pregnant wife. You're like, crap. This is not gonna you know it's not gonna pay the bills. I'm not gonna have enough money here. You saw real estate, you, you got interested, it, you know, it looked like something. You, you met a friend who said that you can make over 100000 a year, which I'm sure at that time really piqued your, uh, piqued your interest. Um, and then it sounds like you got into wholesaling and then building modular homes and then flipping houses. And now you own a brokerage with 80, um, 80 agents, which is, that's a fairly large brokerage. That's, uh, that's, that's definitely good success that you've had there. And you also do custom building and online leads. That's, I mean, that's, you're pretty much everywhere that a real estate entrepreneur could be. So, um, you got, you got to be in the, in the action. You know? <laughs> I love it. Um, so great. Let's, uh, let's just jump into, to all of this. Um, first, the thing that jumped out the most when you were talking earlier, you were talking about, uh, title issues. You know, it sounds like you were trying to get into land. Um, and you found that you had a lot of people running, I mean, you were running into a lot of title issues. Um, I'm actually dealing this with this right now in a mobile home park that I'm um, purchasing. And it turns out that somebody was on title that he, the current owner had no idea about. Um, who knows how it got there, but there's another person on title. So I'm sure you've run into, you know, hairy title issues like this as well. How do you go about dealing with title issues um, when they come up? You don't give up. <laughs> you got, you know. There's there's phases. You know, like there's the there's the beginning phase where it's just you. You know, who are these people that are on title? If this person died, how many heirs back do we have to go? Um, you know, and if it's so many years back and so many heirs back, you know, if X amount of people have died in the chain, then you could take it to an attorney and they run ads. And they could actually get it removed on occasion, but a lot of times you gotta, you know, you gotta go and negotiate the deal. Find, you know, like um, we we use a people finding search. It's kind kind of hard to get into because it's it's regulated, uh, but like TLO. But I'm sure you've got people finding. Um, your title company attorney is huge. You know, hopefully you have somebody. You know, everybody watching has some has somebody that is truly knows how to clean title and knows how to work with the title insurance company that if certain clouds can be written over, but some things, as you know, you, you can't. Uh, so we've had title issues of all kinds. I mean, we've literally mailed cigarettes, cartons of cigarettes to someone in another country in jail to get them to sign off on a deed. <laughs> wow, you know, that was a great story. We've had 30 heirs that have taken us two years to clean a single title you know, chains of people who have passed. Um, so my partner, you know, I was more into that in the early phase. He, he's all over that now working directly with our title attorney. And, you know, as a staff, you know, if we got to track people down. Um, so it title's huge and a lot of people don't realize. And, and I've watched people try to close without title insurance. Um, and I always recommend people do have title insurance because having watched thousands of transactions, you know, poop happens. It just, it happens. Yeah, <laughs> so. absolutely. I, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Title insurance is super important because you honestly, it's, it's just, the world is very uh, complex and that complexity yeah. is reflected in titles. And yeah. So we had never... one little, like one time cost us tens of thousands. We had, you know, it was not even a foot of someone else's house onto our property. And it ended up costing us tens of thousands of dollars to resolve that. And it was this piece of junk house needed tore down, but the, the neighbor chose to be a jerk. And it was an issue. Um, you know, so it's, I could tell stories all day long about getting, you know, so, and it's the same with land, you know, you got to research your land. And Absolutely. Um, and uh, I mean, at some, maybe not this time, but at some point that, that uh, um, cigarette carton story, that sounds like a good one to hear about. So, um, but right takes, now, whatever it takes, it, right now, it sounds like uh, right. You're focused on your brokerage and your building, your two B's. 
Um, so you got one side of the house. Sounds like that's what you take on the most. Um, and that is the, the brokerage side. And then you have the other side, which is custom building. Um, so those are two very different business models. Uh, on it, on the, the custom building side, um, how do you go about finding the land that you're building for, building on? Yeah, there, there's, there's really so many ways. You know, we've done it different times, different years. And right now we have a good team of folks that are taking action to contact owners, things like that on their own. Um, what I found is, you know, a multi like, so if I were like, I know I want to get a, you know, 40 pieces of land in the next year. Um, I contact each local city um, and find out if I can purchase or get. Uh, and so a lot of times you got to turn in a Freedom of Information Act. You know how that is, the FAFSA and all, and basically demand the data. I want to know everybody who's delinquent. I want a list of delinquent properties. And some of the cities are easy to work with. Some of the cities are hard to work with. Um, you know, but that's, for me, I like to go to the source. In a market like this, you're not going to find your best deals on the MLS. You know, if I'm, I'm, and that will change again one day, you know, like back in the day. But you're not going to find the best deals, most likely. So you got to go to the source. And, uh, and so for me, it's starting with a really great list, uh, you know, who's delinquent and all that type of thing. And then the land, you know, that we want in the areas that we want or the properties that we want to tear down. Um, and then, you know, between it, it's, it's shocking when I look back over 15 years, like I sent out 5,000 postcards like seven years ago. Okay. And so we did a great big whatever. The plan was to call all the people, email all the people, and mail all the people. So we took the time and used like search bug to pull all their phone numbers. And we, you know what I mean? We do all that preliminary data work. And I have somebody do that real affordably. Um, and, but we got, we sent out those 5,000 postcards and we've been getting deals for like years. We just got to, you know, off of the same postcards, people kept the postcards, stuck them in their thing. And so it's so funny. It's old school, right? Old school. Um, but you're not going to find landowners running ads. Like I can generate, you know, thousands of Facebook and pay-per-click leads for real estate agents to sell buyers and sellers, mostly buyers. Um, but you're not going to find land that, you know, a high amount of land constantly by doing digital advertising. From my experience, I've never put thousands a month in, but the, I have run quite some experiments and my, most of our success is what I would call old school, you know, which is calling them and mailing them and emailing them and calling them and calling <laughs> <laughs> over and over and over, you know, absolutely. Uh, I mean, we do that um, a lot. We we focus mostly on mobile home and RV parks and, um, you know, cold calling. These are a lot of mom and pop owners. And so cold calling is one of the best ways to do it. We actually, we do have a lot of success with digital marketing, um, but for land, it might be different. And I, I want, I mean, you're a hundred percent right about the mailers. Um, I've done postcards myself and it's crazy how long people keep those things around. <laughs> You'd think that you're only going to get it, you know, the first couple of weeks after you send out the postcards. Right. Yep. But months you're will pass. Instant gratification. You know? Nope. Mm -mm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, great. And so you've also, it sounds like, you know, you're on the marketing side. Um, you've had a lot of success with postcards, um, mailers, and it sounds like a little bit of email too. Um, but you also, you knew you did the work, you went out, you went to the County, you went to the city, um, and you asked for delinquent property lists, which, uh, which is a big, um, competitive advantage to somebody, to anybody who chooses to do that because most people don't do that. So, um, that's a good source as well. You also mentioned, um, online leads. And so this is an area that a lot of people are really interested in these days. Um, it sounds like you're using it mostly for your agents. How do you go about, you know, what do you do? What, what are the platforms you use? How do you go about running those ads and what kind of results do you see when you run them? That's, that's great. Lots of questions in that packed in, <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, 
you know, you've got your big picture long term, which is keeping your brand out, you know, that type of thing, which is huge. Um, but we've right now social media leads are just so cheap, you know, so where we're, you know, anywhere from three to eight dollars, you know, and normally, normally in that five to seven dollar range. So hundreds of those and pulling them into a home search, an MLS home search. Uh, you know, so we've got thousands of people that we're doing, you know, your remarketing is big to keep the brand and keep the people coming back. Um, and I'm not out here preaching this, uh, you know, this system, but I moved over to a new system in October. I was doing, I, we were doing it all our, on our own. Like I, we were running all our Facebook ads, PPC, you know, uh, all this stuff, you know, Google ads. I've always done good on that stuff. You know, we have a pretty robust, diverse website. So was, we pay to people, get people there. They tend to contact, but I moved to this company called Wilopo and most people have not heard of it, but it is in, it's the best. It's has alleviated a huge amount of my work. Uh, they generate hundreds of leads, very fair price. But the best thing about it, is they have a deal with the artificial intelligence company company and i've never seen such an awesome artificial intelligence interaction in in my life so the, the bot talks as if it's an assistant to for each agent individually names the agent i'm suzanne's assistant and it starts asking them questions how soon you looking to move uh, hey can i send you this blog that we have on our website and it, it will send them live properties it studies what they do. They go in as they search houses. If they change to like from Chesapeake to Virginia Beach, or they start looking at different price ranges, it will change the ads they see on all of their websites and everywhere they're online, on their face, social media, on their Google. It changes the ad to show the houses that match what, they're, what the people are looking at today and yesterday. And then it, and it sends them, so it, I've met that for me, to, is a, but I've, because I've done it on my own all the years, it, I, it means a lot when somebody just does it all for me for a fair price and does an amazing job and then has the AI. So I've enjoyed that, but not everybody would find that, you know, Wilopo being their perfect thing. Um, you know, so we've generated leads of all kinds. I mean, it's, you know, it's, as you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, social media has transformed the ease of lead gen because Google pay-per-click and all that used to be huge for me. Um, but, and we still do it, but, uh, you know, so having a good website, good presence, good marketing, but lead conversion, as you know, is the biggest, you can generate all the leads in the world, but if the agents can't sell the houses, so that's why the AI helps them. But, the, the strength of each individual agent, you know, I've watched many agents succeed, many agents fail, many of them uh, for reasons you wouldn't expect, you know, simply they made too much money and then they got in tax trouble. Uh, some of them, you know, couldn't, you know, couldn't convert a lead or couldn't help somebody make a decision on a house, you know, but all kinds of reasons. But um, I've always tried to make sure leads are never the problem. Um, but, uh, but it takes tenacity and grit to keep getting your butt kicked on leads and and that is it but it, it works it always has um i've watched it feed a lot of families <laughs> over these years so absolutely absolutely um so yeah i mean leads are definitely that's the start of the funnel that's when you um, really get your business going um you mentioned something else converging or converting the leads um and that can be a really difficult thing um, you're kind of coming from the brokerage side of things. A lot of people listening, they'll be coming from, you know, off-market lead generation, trying to find distressed sellers. Um, but they're kind of part and parcel. Um, the conversations oftentimes will go that will go not the same, but very similar in the in the in the flow. Um, so if you could kind of give us some of your best advice on how to how to make those calls go well, um, like how do you do the how do you how do you make your conversion go up um, when you're getting so many leads? it's really nice to have, you know, if you're getting a lot, you mean that that's to convert well individually. Like we have agents who, when they get on the phone, it's, it's a relational conversation. It's asking the great, you know, the very great questions, you know, 
finding out where are they in life? What are their goals? You know, are they interested in selling this property? You know, if, you know, if it's somebody looking for a flip, uh, you know, it's like helping people explore their options in that first phone call is huge because when you help people explore their options, like I like to come to them with more than one option, you know? So if I call somebody and they're looking to uh, their house's piece of junk, I could say, I got people that can help renovate that house. I got it. I can make a deal with you to tear it down and build on it. I can make a deal with you to sell it to another investor. I can make, you know, I like to have different options to make money off of that. Um, but the biggest thing watching agents or even on like property acquisition, a lot of it is it's the relational engagement of what is the people's personal goals and how can you help by buying that property out, alleviating their headache, you know, and, and it's so it's, it's really the ability to emotionally connect with people and help get them to, you know, that next step to make a decision, you know, is, is huge. I mean, you, yeah. you know, but for us, when it's bulk leads, it's, it's, you got to hit them quick. You know, you gotta, you can't wait till the next day, you know, um, when somebody's trying to sell a beat up property, you, you might have a little more grace period there, but it's still, it's whoever talks to them first makes a connection. You know, I, like I bought an apartment complex at Virginia, in Virginia beach about maybe five or so years ago. And I went over in the sweetest lady and I went old school. I brought a piece of paper contract with two pages and I said, well, you know, I shook her hand. And I said, what can I do to make this as easy as possible for you? You know, she had called off a postcard, you know, to, to buy a delinquent or buy, you know, old property or, and, uh, and I bought a five, a five, uh, unit apartment complex closed in 30 days. And she chose me to sell it to me because when I shook her hand, when I talked to her, she knew she could trust me and she felt like, you know, he don't, you know, I think I can trust this guy to actually give me the money. And this is a lot of money and I'll take it, you know? Um, and so it, it just, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of people think they're trying to be salesy people and it's not salesiness. It's relational connection. So. Absolutely. Yeah. I, uh, a few things jumped out of me when you were, um, when you were talking it's, you mentioned connection that you got to have the connection. Um, speed is important when, when you're talking about bulk, but also you, you mentioned at the beginning that you have to um, explore your options. And I think that's, uh, I mean, you, you mentioned that you ha they have to trust you. And I feel like exploring the options is one of the best way to build that trust because you're telling them like, look, this is what I can do for you. There's, there's different options that you can take. Um, you don't have to choose, you know, I'm not going to push you in any direction, um, but just being open and transparent and showing that, you know, these are your options that you can go forward with. Um, so I love that you said that. That's, uh, that's, that's really great advice. Um, so we do try to keep these to around 20 to 25 minutes. So I'm going to shift gears just a little bit here um, and ask a bit about your experiences and your stories. Um, we all know real estate, it's a roller coaster. You got your ups, downs, um, both financially and emotionally. Um, so kind of take us to one of the, one of the low points in your career so far and tell us what's the, uh, what's the best lesson that you learned in that period? I've had a few along the way. I, there's no need to revisit the real estate crash. That's so old school. So let me come back. I'll come up. Uh, it wasn't very long ago, uh, you know, about maybe three, three years or so. Um, I had been building this company for you know, 12 years or 13 years, whatever it was at that time. And I had allowed it to become, uh, you know, uh, I had allowed it to, I, I, I took my finger, because it had gotten so big, uh, all the stuff I was involved in, I took my fingers off the details. I took my eyes off the details. And I, thought that more things was going to help me be diversified. Um, and so I added more things versus make sure that I managed the very details of the things that I had happening. 
And so by taking my fingers off and taking my eyes off of the details, I allowed uh, my, some of my staff to drift in, you know, how committed are they actually to being at this company? Are they actually working their hours? Are they, are they actually working for me anymore? Or are they just working on their own business plan and, you know, this kind of stuff. And because I let it go so long and only realized it, you know, uh, whatever, it was a painful, difficult r to reform the company that I had had built. Uh, so I had to completely reform the culture, uh, had to bring in some new eyes, fresh, fresh view, uh, people who understand the difference between running a team versus running a brokerage, a brokerage my as we have now is very broad it allows for people of, of all types large you know agents who already have teams to brand new agents to everybody in between so it abroad that was something that my early staff couldn't understand and i couldn't understand why they couldn't understand that we were a brokerage now not a team um and so that that allowing that um and that then caused a big financial, you know, where I lost an enormous amount of money in one and a half years, more money than, I mean, just ridiculous over a million dollars. Um, and, and so I could have reformed the company two years earlier when I realized there was a problem, but I didn't because I had gotten myself into too many businesses, too many things. I started a media company, I had started uh, advertising for builder thing. I had, you know, I, I had purchased some property. I, you know, I got myself into too much. So I, then it took me two years to simplify my life, you know? So I chose to actually take a couple companies and I sold a great majority of one to the partner that was running it uh, to, so I did not feel like I had to invest time or money into that anymore. Um, and I, I made other changes. I shifted my business because I was taking a huge financial loss. Um, so what I, I, my, my encouragement to people is, you know, having come through the real estate crash of like 2008, having come through different crises of, you know, real estate agents, uh, situations and things I've, that have caused me to have challenging situations, uh, to that big, most biggest loss experience of my life. And I'm thankful I'm past that. Um, you know, it's don't give up, like wake up in the morning. My partner, Kenton in the home building company, he got a big tattoo, confident expectation of good on his arm to make sure when he looks down, he don't forget, you know, like I say in my book, the real estate journey, you know, you got to look in the mirror and you got to preach to yourself. You got to remind yourself, why you got into the business, what are your goals? You know, your goals are in pencil, not pen a lot of times. We, you know, we, Corona taught us that for sure if it didn't remind us. You know, you can have all the goals in the world, but they better be in pencil. You got to adjust them as life changes and you mature. Um, you know, so that, my encouragement is confident expectation of good. You've got to not give up and you got to look at it as those beatings are, are, are that's your education. That's that extra degree that you got and didn't use, <laughs> but you'll use this degree you just got, you know, when you lose 50 grand on that flip, you're, <laughs> learn, you're going to learn some lessons and, you know, you won't forget them. <laughs> Absolutely. There, I mean, there's so many up. good pieces of advice there. That is for sure. I like a confident expectation of good. That is, um, it's, it's knowing, you know, it's not set in stone, but you just got to be confident that it will happen. You know, if you keep putting your, keep focused, um, it sounds like, you know, the, the trough for you was at a time when you were kind of, your focus was disparate. You were, you were focused on so many different things and you kind of lost attention to the detail. Um, and it all turned around for you when you, when you simplified, you, you chose the things that you were going to succeed at. Um, you had that confident expectation of good. And you just, you put the blinders on and went down that path. Um, and that is probably the best advice that you can give anybody who wants to accomplish a goal. Um, you also mentioned something just a second ago, and I want to go back to that. You wrote a book. Um, tell us about your book real quick. Yeah, I've got uh, the real estate journey is, it's my own personal story, but it weaves together, um, you know, 
it, somebody looking to buy or to just whether it's their first property, multiple properties, it's not a get rich quickie type of book. You know, it's about goals, dreams, uh, you know, getting over the mindset that, you know, we all that stinking thinking type of stuff. You know, so it's, 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 I took everything as I was learning. I would make notes since I got out of school. I, I've just always kept notes on my big lessons. And I put a lot of my butt kickings and lessons. And <laughs> I tried to weave in the things that I held on to through the hard times that I've experienced of companies succeeding and failing. Um, you know, so, so the book, and if anybody's what, you know, if anybody watching that would like to actually, if you buy my book, the real estate journey, if you go to brian and you let me know, you bought the book, I will give you an access code to go and, uh, for my, I have an e-learning, uh, video series. That's where you can download the PDFs and it's all about goals and dreams, overcoming dream busters. It's about legacy, some of the deep questions when you're sitting in the back, you know, you imagine yourself in the back of your own funeral, who you wish was there, what do you, you know, what, it's some legacy, uh, but also, you know, smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-specific goals, you know, how to make them, things I learned and have used ever since I was, got my doctorate in, in leadership coaching. So I used a lot of my coaching stuff in my book and also on that e-learning. But if you guys want that, I'll give it to you for free. Just tell me that you uh, saw me with Gabe today. So. Awesome. So you heard it from him himself. Go to briansimon.com um, and just let him know that you bought the book. He will give you access to his e-learning course. Um, and it sounds like this is both a story about real estate and about um, you know achieving your goals. I know speaking for myself, I read a bunch of books about um, you know individual investors before I got started. And it kind of gave me that that, you know, that fire to get going. So I, uh, I appreciate anybody who wrote a book, um, about, you know, the business of real estate. Yep. And then the last chapter, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered, man. So taxes, pay your taxes. Don't pay more than you have to. But pay. <laughs> For Good. sure. Taxes are, uh, they are a subject <laughs> in and of themselves. We'll steer clear of that this episode, but, uh, it, it is a, it's a big one for sure. Um, awesome. So we are at about at the end here before we go though. I mean, you got a doctorate in leadership, so I have to ask you the question that I, that I usually ask guests. Um, sometimes I suppose, uh, if there is one habit that contributes the most to your success as a real estate entrepreneur, what is that habit? Put your boots on and go back to work. No matter Simple. what, no matter what, no matter how many people are mad at you, no matter who you let down, no matter what deals fell apart, no matter the market crashing, no matter if disease outbreak spreads across the world, just <laughs> put your boots on, get your butt, just keep going. Um, you know, and it, and that's most people, you know, most people give up and that's, that's who confident expectation of good, man. You gotta, you, and that's, there's been many days that I didn't want to keep pushing. And that had I not just said, I, you know, dude, you got, you only you can change the, the business. Only you can impact. Only you can affect your staff. Only you, you have to go. You got to go to work. So. Absolutely. I like that. Put your boots on, get back to work. Um, I mean, there's, there's nothing simpler than that. And it's also the most important piece of business in general is just keep going forward. Um, you're going to hit roadblocks, but, just put those boots on and everything will eventually turn out. Um, so Brian, thank you very much for coming on here. Um, you've given us a lot of pieces of wisdom, but everybody needs to receive things too. So if somebody were to bring you something, what would you want to receive? And now say that again. Uh, are you looking for deals? Um, are oh, you looking yeah. for... I mean, mainly what we do, you know, here in Hampton Roads is there's eight, nine cities, you know, sales and, and deals. But if some, okay, if some, anybody's out there that has people that have money and they want to get in on what we're doing, um, like we're always buying land, developing land, and there's, they're not making any more land, you know, so it's very valuable. Um, we know how to develop it. And, uh, you know, banks, we have great banking relationships and have for many years, but we are open to uh, you know individuals who want to invest money as well uh, into our land development. 
projects. So. Perfect. And if somebody wanted to get in contact with you, what's the best way they would do that? Yep. Uh, go to briansimon.com and, and uh, send me a contact form and send me a message and, uh, or brian at fit realty, B R I A N at F I T realty.com uh, and love to connect. So. There you go. You heard it from him. Um, if you guys want to get in contact with Brian, reach out on his website, briansimon.com. Um, I will also put the LinkedIn in the show notes so you can click there. Um, and if you get his book and you send him a note, he will give you access to his digital learning course. Um, so again, Brian, thank you very much for coming on. I appreciated all the wisdom you shared. I'm sure everybody else did too. Um, for everybody else, we look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. Thank you, Gabe. Thanks for what you do, man. Thank you for joining us on the Real Estate Investing Club. If you've watched this far, I'm sure you've gotten a little bit of value out of this. So we would appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up, share it with your friends or family, whatever it may be. And if you'd like to share or partner with us on a deal, we absolutely love partnering on deals and are always looking for quality projects. Go to www.therealestateinvestingclub.com to get in contact with one of our partners. Otherwise, I hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.